Today, I'm sharing my thoughts on Silver Spike Acquisition Corp merging with. We're diving into their business, financials, and much more. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? My name is Matthew, and today we are talking all things Silver Spike Acquisition Corp, who is currently targeting maps. This merger is expected to close by the end of Q2 in 2021, and a couple quick things before we get started on this video. First, I personally don't consume the substance that we're about to talk about today, but I think some exposure to it in my portfolio is very interesting. Second, in this video, we're gonna have to talk in kind of a roundabout secret language way so that YouTube doesn't get mad at me. So from here on out, WM Holdings or mm, Maps will just be referred to as Maps in this video, and the substance we're talking about today will be referred to as Puff Puff. So, mm, Maps is maps and the substance is puff puff. Okay, now that we've hopefully outsmarted YouTube auto transcribe, give me the format. First, an overview of maps and the different parts of their business. Second, a look at their juicy financials and the current valuation as I record this video. And finally, third, the risky risks involved with this potential investment. As I record this video, I don't currently own any shares of SSPK, but I figured I might as well make this video for anyone who's interested. And of course, if I do end up buying in, all top tier patrons will be alerted as they are with all of my trades and buy sell alerts, first link in the description below. All right, no time wasted. Let's get right into part one, an overview of their business and the different parts. So Maps is actually a two-sided marketplace. They have a one side that faces other businesses, which is B2B, and another side that faces customers and consumers, which is B2C. Maps is actually a SaaS company, so their B2B offering is something called business in a box. Here is a quick overview of what business in a box looks like. You have a POS system, analytics, ability to promote your products on maps, and compliant delivery systems. Maps offers these services to retailers for a subscription of $500 per month, and that's how they generate a good portion of their revenue. Of course, in addition to the standard subscription, they also include different upsell features that retailers can pay more for. And their maps platform has actually proven to be pretty effective for Puff Puff retailers. Their website sees about a 15% conversion rate, which is pretty dang impressive. Additionally, the average order ahead value is about $100 per order versus average in-store transactions of about $50. Not only that, but marketing on Maps has been pretty cost efficient for Puff Puff retailers. The average cost per click when it comes to marketing on Maps is only about 50 cents with a 13% click through rate. This chart compares that to the average cost per click on Google search for auto ads, health and medical ads, and more. And for 45% of Maps clients, marketing spend is only 3% or less as a percentage of revenue. In other words, they're not spending a lot on marketing relative to how much money they're making, which means Maps marketing is pretty cost efficient. And to wrap up the main benefits of business in a box, potentially one of the biggest ones is the fact that it comes with compliance measures for delivery and fulfillment built into the system. You see, regulations vary by state and local cities, and some can be really challenging. For example, California requires 90 days of GPS logs, live fleet tracking, etc. And Business in a Box has all of that built in so that the Puff Puff retailer does not have to worry about building out these regulation compliances and infrastructure on their own. And that's the whole idea. You buy it and everything is in the box. The retailers get these kinds of benefits and infrastructure for $500 a month, which is likely a lot cheaper than if they were to find each part individually on their own. All right, now let's talk about B2C, the side of maps that faces the consumer. Okay, so this is actually like the mm, maps website, the side that faces consumers and the one that users interact with. This you can kind of think of as a Yelp and a marketplace for Puff Puff. Maps is able to help users find vendors that they can trust with a rating and verification badge process. The website an app has over 10 million active users, making it the largest proprietary marketplace for the substance. It attempts to match those users with the 18,000 different business listings it has on there. In terms of demographic, 90% of their users consume Puff Puff monthly and 70% consume Puff Puff daily. And don't forget, Maps is an AI company as well. Every time someone uses their platform, they're collecting vast amounts of data that can improve both their B2B and B2C solutions and give more insight to the young evolving industry of Puff Puff. 
When looking at reviews, Maps is a very solid 4.7 star rating on over 70,000 reviews in Google Play Store. However, very recent reviews have been down rating the app because apparently they removed the delivery feature in the last update. And to me, this move would make no sense. I really don't understand why Maps would do this, as delivery was one of their main and most compelling features. This is definitely an area for further diligence if you're interested in investing in this company. All I've been able to find so far is this article shared by a top tier patron by Quadzilla Puff Puff, which says Maps delivery is leaving by the end of November 2020, speaking specifically about the Canadian region. And finally, according to Maps' viewpoint on their competitors, other Puff Puff focused technology solutions lack the ability to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. But in all seriousness, these videos do take a long time to research, record, and edit, so I'd really appreciate just a quick thumbs up and consider subscribing if you like the research that you've seen so far. Okay, according to Maps, other Puff Puff focused technology actually lacks the same scale and breadth of products and solutions. And traditional tech solutions like Shopify will not work with the Puff Puff industry because of the intensely regulated environment that Maps has already spent 12 years navigating. Okay, actually the last thing is a quick look at their team before we move on. Let's do some quick, quick LinkedIn snooping. Chris Beals, the CEO, has been at Maps for five years and apparently guided the company through the development of their business in the box idea. So it's great to see that he's now at the helm of the company, seeing as BIAB looks like a huge chunk of their business model. He also went to law school at UPenn and worked at a couple of LLPs before pursuing business. This could definitely come in handy in a heavily regulated space like maps. Speaking of which, Brian Kamir, sorry if I butchered that, is the general counsel at MAPS. He was an associate at Cooley LLP and associate general counsel for Snapchat before joining the company. One step further and we find that Cooley claims to be the number one law firm for tech and life sciences IPOs. They also deal in regulatory issues and defend in regulation investigations. Probably pretty handy in this context. And the last exec we'll look at is the CFO. Arden Lee worked M&A at Deutsche Bank right out of college after graduating from Princeton. He then went through 12 years of investment banking and worked two years at Nike as VP of Global Business Planning. Pretty solid at a first glance. Now that we have an understanding of what this company does and who is leading them, let's take a look at part two, their juicy financials. One reason why I'm even considering this SPAC is because they have 12 years of financial history. They've actually been profitable every year since being founded in 2008. And for the past five years, their revenues have been growing at a 40% CAGR or compound annual growth rate. With this SPAC, I know that any financial projections are based on many years of financial and business operation history versus what management just expects might happen. Okay, here's the financial snapshot. You'll probably notice that when looking at revenue growth rates, that 13% growth in 2018 sticks out like a sore thumb, but don't worry. Essentially, in 2018, there were some uncertainties regarding certain regulations in California. And because California made up 85% of MAPS revenue base, it was a bumpy start to 2018. But now, at least in terms of financials, that headwind is resolved and California makes up just 50% of the revenue versus 85. So it's great to see that they're diversifying where they're getting their revenue from, but 50% is still a lot. When looking at EBITDA, you'll notice that in 2019, their EBITDA margin decreased 4% 0.3% seemingly out of nowhere. Well, that's because in 2019, Maps made a whole lot of investments into new markets and their business in a box business model. Their EBITDA growth rate has been decreasing since 2014, but the company has stated many times that they're focusing on top line growth. So this seems to be fine for now. Overall, I think this company's past five years have been pretty solid on the income statement, but we're working with very limited visibility on the details since we only have their investor presentation right now. So it's time to look at some projections and goals from the company financially. By the end of 2020, they're hoping for 160 million in revenues. Let's break this down line by line really quick. So on the fiscal year 2019 side, they have actuals and adjusted for account cutoff. This is because by December 31st of 2019, Maps removed all non-licensed distributors from their platform, but those same non-licensed distributors that were kicked off accounted for about $29 million of 2019's revenue. So 2019's $144 million in revenue minus the $29 million brought in by the vendors that were kicked off the platform results in $115 million in adjusted revenues, so a 40% increase in revenue from this new baseline of 
115 million is roughly 160 million. In other words, you can't really expect a company to have the same revenue growth rates after they banish a portion of their revenue forever. And I think this was the smart, responsible thing for Maps to have done. In 2020, they expect to finish with $35 million in EBITDA with an EBITDA margin back up to 21.9%. Also, fun fact, as a company, they're able to be listed on the NASDAQ because they do not touch Puff Puff. Finally, they expect to continue to grow their revenue by a 40% CAGR all the way through 2023. I don't feel like I know enough about the business to determine whether or not I personally think this is realistic, but as of now, I kind of have a feeling that maybe that's a bit of a stretch to maintain that for the next three years. They could also surprise me considering they're still in the early stages of rolling out their business in a box model that seems to have had early success. They're yet to ramp up monetization efforts on that platform. It is important to note that these projections assume that maps will not open in any new states through 2021 to 2022. So if maps does enter new markets in new states, this could unlock even more upside than projected. Personally, I think they will end up entering new states in the next two years and it will probably help them meet these projections. I couldn't find any balance sheet information because the info right now is very limited or I'm just really bad at research and I should rethink this whole YouTube thing. But the balance sheet is definitely something I'd want to take a look at if I were to build a serious position in this company. Well, I did find this, which tells us that at least 100 million in cash from this deal will go toward the balance sheet. This slide also tells us that Silver Spike shareholders will own 17% of maps once they merge. So with SSPK at roughly a $407 million market cap as I record this video, that means 17% of maps would be worth $407 million today if the merger went through. And with that, we divide $407 million by 17% to get a valuation of $2.39 billion for maps today. With expected revenue of $160 million for 2020, that gives us a price to sales ratio of almost exactly 15. And honestly, that's not too bad considering all the hype and insane valuations we're seeing all over the place today. And don't get me wrong, that's still kind of expensive, but it could be justified for someone who's super bullish on this company. Here's another table looking at some more forward-looking valuation metrics and comparing them to other vertical SaaS companies, marketplace companies, and e-commerce enablement platforms. But just note that for this table, they're using an enterprise value or EV of 1.5 billion as shown on this slide right here. Now it's time for part three, the last part of the video, the risky risks involved with this investment. There's a multitude of risks right now stemming from the lack of information that we have. Another one, very fun, is the fact that they have a federal probe into the company which remains unresolved. They did say that in their dialogue with the DOJ, they've had productive discussions about a potential resolution, but no agreement has been reached. On the bright side, Maps believes that the focus of this investigation is regarding the Puff Puff retailers from 2019 in California that were not licensed. And as we know, all of those vendors were kicked off the platform by the end of 2019. So this kind of shouldn't be an issue if that is the focus of this investigation, again, which we don't know if it is or not. And again, lack of information, you know, everything I found in this video was pretty much from their investor presentation, investor conference calls, some articles here and there, or their Form 25 filings with the SEC. And I do want to revisit these reviews that point out the fact that they removed their deliveries and deals feature, which seemed to be the main reason why people use the app in the first place. So definitely, again, an area for further diligence there. I still label this one a big fat spec play, at least until we get some more information and clarity from the company. But if I were we're itching to get in and due to the fast paced nature of SPACs these days, which is still kind of crazy to me, I would see this as a potential playable stock with some money that I'm not too attached to. If you found any value in this video and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out our quote of the day. You might just learn something. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching, and all that good stuff. And if you're watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVP. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.